Hi, I'm Larry Janeski from Dr. Energy Saver. Today, we're at a new house being constructed and Dr. Energy Saver is actually installing a uh, efficient heating and air conditioning system with a properly sized and installed ductwork system in this house. But I wanted to show you some of the details that are built into a house that make it energy inefficient and why millions of homes out there have these problems. Let's take a look. Okay, here we have a flex duct coming across a supply run and uh, we're gonna have a tray ceiling here, but we can see that that flex duct is above the joist bay. It's on top of the ceiling joist over here, and then over here it comes down into the ceiling joist bay, and uh, the insulator is not gonna be able to get a bat fully fluffed uh, around and underneath this, uh, this duct. So there's gonna be some compromise made there where there's a gap in the fiberglass, uh, and this is where blown-in insulation really excels provided it's installed by someone who is uh, careful and conscientious. You can blow insulation underneath that duct, fill all those odd shaped cavities around the duct, and then uh, continue to blow on top of the duct and really do a good job with blown in insulation. Where bats, uh, very difficult to get them fitted to all these odd shaped spaces and uh, compromises are made all the time that allow uh, cold spots in the ceiling. We also know that we're gonna put R38 bats in this ceiling and the Department of Energy calls for R60 in our climate. So uh, even a brand new house could use uh, more insulation in the attic. Here we are in the attic and we're gonna have a uh, tray ceiling in this master bedroom. And so um, the elevation of these joists is higher than the the ceiling joists in the rest of the house and there's a, a sloped transition that it's going to make but again a lot of detail for insulation to be installed and you know around all this framing we're definitely going to have gaps I mean the insulator is not going to be able to get bats fitted in here to where there's no gaps and uh, uh, we're going to have some some issues there we have a duct system that is put in with uh, self adhering uh, takeoff boots and uh, we're, we don't have uh, problems with uh, leakage uh, here because it's a, a modern uh, duct system but typically we're going to have duct leakage around here in an existing home so we're pretty good over here um, this insulation could use to be taped we also have uh, R6 uh, duct wrap here and it's just not enough uh, if we're really going to have a uh, an efficient home we need to add insulation to to this uh, duct if it's going to be in an unconditioned attic. Now this, the, the, the duct guy did a great job. Uh, it certainly meets code, but code just isn't enough. We have a 140 degree attic in the summer. We have R6 uh, insulation here. Uh, not enough. Now here we see we have this cavity here um, that forms this intersecting gable in the front. And if we had any issues, if we had can lights out there, for example, uh, we'd have to get out there to seal them. And sometimes when they sheathe the roof, they'll, sh they'll put the roof sheathing on straight across these rafters, and then they'll build a, the intersecting gable or a doghouse out on top of that. So in order to seal around any can lights that might be out there, we may have to cut a hole in the sheathing to get through there to get into that space to uh, to do that ceiling. Now this house isn't completed yet, but uh, if it were completed, we would see more holes uh, where air could get up into the attic. Could be can lights, pipe and wire penetrations, various building assemblies, um, ceiling around the, uh, where the, all the ducts go through the ceiling. Uh, the drywaller is gonna cut a hole around there and there's gonna be a gap between the sheet metal boot and the drywall, those are all places where air could leak up into the attic that are gonna to have to be addressed. If we don't think that air is passing through wall cavities, take a look at that. We have gaps here, you can see daylight. You can see daylight up here. So there's plenty of air leakage. This is gonna be vinyl siding and the air is gonna come right in through uh, these uh, gaps and go up the wall cavity, pulling heat with it, wind washing our insulation with it. Now here uh, is a two by six wall cavity. We're gonna put R19 bats in here. But here where the header is, the insulator is probably 
just going to squash the bat here and compress the bat. And when you compress the fiberglass bat, you lose R value. It needs to be fully fluffed in a sealed cavity to get the R value that's on the, on the bat. Okay, here the, the plumber by code sealed around this pipe with fire caulk, but look, I could drop this nail right down to the, to the basement. <laughs> so this is uh, plastic tubing for our uh, hot and cold water supply lines, and we see that uh, there's gaps around here. And this is typical in nearly every house uh, that ever built, we have gaps around pipes and wires. Classic problem. We got a cantilever, okay? That means the, the floor joists stick out over the wall so that second floor is bigger than the first floor. So if you look here, the floor joists stick out another 18 inches or so. That floor is outside. And then we have a hole for the plumbing for the jacuzzi tub, all right? So air from that cantilever, if it's not sealed properly, uh, air will, cold air will get in between the floor joists, between the first and second floor, and could go right up underneath that tub and affect uh, what's going on with the plumbing. I mean, it's gonna affect the whole back of the house uh, as it is, but I mean, the, the real answer to that is to seal it properly and insulate it properly, that cantilever. Here's a basement door, and uh, this is just a, a walkout door like any door. And one thing that we can see is that we have a shim space here, okay? This framed opening is framed two inches bigger than the door. So this is a six foot door, uh, a, a two, three oh doors. So it's six foot, and we framed the uh, rough opening six foot two. So we have a jam that's uh, uh, five eighths or so. And then we have a shim space so we can get the door uh, plumb and level. But then we have a space around the door and that provides a place for air to get in. So uh, when one, one way to seal the shim space afterwards is perhaps to drill small holes up in here uh, behind the weather stripping, uh, eighth inch holes where we can stick the needle of our foam gun in there. If you have the right foam gun, it takes a needle and you can squirt foam in here and you're gonna use a cup, maybe a can and a half of foam to go around this door but that's how you can do it after the fact. We take a look here, we have, this is a, a stud and here's a jack stud, okay? The jack stud holds up a, a header. Um, here we have a, a, um, the way this header is constructed, there's different ways of doing it. They've left it shy, okay? And uh, probably are not gonna put in any insulation in here. If they uh, put fiberglass bats in this wall, they'll put fiberglass bats in these cavities, but here there won't be, there'll be a gap. and. Uh, that makes a gap in our, our thermal boundary. Of course, the header is not, the wood is more thermally conductive than insulation, so it's gonna be a cold spot in this wall where the headers are. If we take a look here, we have the foundation wall, we have a treated wood, uh, this is a sill plate, this is a double sill plate, and <clears throat> we have an opening. We use sill sealer, which is this foam sealer, but I can stick this piece of sheet metal right out to the outside, you can see daylight right through here pretty well. And what they'll probably do is take a, uh, when they side the house, they'll take a little five quarter by three or four piece of trim and they'll cover up that space outside, but air will still leak in through there quite a bit. So that's a place where we get air leakage. Here's a window and the window again has a shim space around it. So this is an area of concern. Now you'll notice on this window, uh, they put the, the vinyl window in and we still have studs showing. Now, this is a two by six wall, so that's good. We can get more insulation in the wall, but they will put an extension jam on it. This, is, this would be called an extension jam to come out to uh, pass the drywall and then it could be trimmed. So um, that's, that would need an extension jam. Now we go around here, we can see that there's a gap between the stud and the uh, foundation and that would need to be sealed. And we take a look up there and we can see gaps in the sill plate, okay? And uh, if there were gaps in this sill plate, that would be a, a, an area where air could leak in uh, pretty readily. But you can see the double sill plate and the gaps up there. Here we have two duct chases, one return, one uh, supply up to the second floor. Once these uh, chases get to the attic, they're gonna go across the attic floor and then the takeoffs, the, the flex runs are gonna come off of there. Well, 
this is pretty good. The, the uh, mechanical contractor, in our case, it's, it's us, <laughs> didn't cut a giant hole in there so we can have a giant hole around there. But typically, there's a big hole around these uh, duct chases to the attic. And you'll have basically the expressway for air to get from the basement to the attic. As it is, there is about a quarter of an inch, uh, even uh, a quarter of an inch space around these ducts. And that would have to be foamed because that goes right up to the attic. So we have a, a laminated uh, girder, okay, and our joists are on top of the girder. And in the foundation, they put a, a block of wood and formed a girder pocket. Now, there's a space on either side of the girder pocket, but this does not leak air. We can see that there's concrete. That girder pocket did not go all the way through the concrete wall to the outside, okay? It just went halfway through the wall, and so um, this, this would not leak air. We can see over here that you can see daylight around that, that electric service line. So that would be a place where air would definitely uh, come in through the rim joist. And so we would definitely want to seal that. The electrician drills a, a two and a half inch hole for a two and a quarter inch pipe or a two inch pipe. And uh, we have um, a gap around there. Here's a place where we have a, a, a pipe going out the front. And, and I believe this is for our septic line. And so here's a gap around here. Now, we're concerned about water uh, coming through here, but we're also concerned about radon gas uh, coming through here as well. The basement's going to be depressurized, going to be sucking air in from wherever it can. And a lot of times, these pipes um, that go out to the septic tank and then go out to leaching fields um, will be backfilled with clean, it could be sand. They might use bank run gravel, which is coarse sand and air can come through there uh, around that pipe and get sucked in there. So that would have to be sealed uh, much better to prevent water and radon gas and unconditioned air from coming in and through here. You'd be surprised, um, are we worried about air coming in from the ground? Yes, and you say, well, it's dirt. There's no air in there. Well, there's lots of air in there and we can suck air through that soil by uh, the stack effect. So that's how radon gas gets in in the first place. Why doesn't it stay in the ground and mind its own business? Well. Um, because we're sucking it in, and when we suck air in, the radon comes along with the air. Okay, now here's another uh, uh, issue, and this is, you know, uh, th these are all very common problems. This is not unique to this house. This is, you know, uh, nearly every house ha is built with these problems, and that's why Dr. Energy Saver exists, to come in and fix these problems. These are why houses are less energy efficient than they could or should be. Here we have a tub that's a uh, uh, jacuzzi tub, uh, that is built into a platform, and this will be tiled probably, okay, and all covered in. Uh, behind here, there's going to be all plumbing, there's going to be uh, the pump to run the water through the jets and so forth, but you see, this platform was framed before the drywaller was here. So the drywaller is going to come down, run the drywall to here. Now, the drywall is our air boundary in, in, in the house, as it is in, in every house, and, and under here, you can see, hello, <laughs> okay, no, uh, I <clears throat> put my hand here, there's going to be no, nothing preventing air from the outside wall cavity from getting in underneath the tub. And just, in fact, in this town, just several days ago, we did a job where we, the homeowner had a pipe freeze underneath the tub. And in fact, we, with a thermal imaging camera, it was uh, 48 degrees outside. We saw that the temperature of the inside of the tub was 51, 51, so it's just three degrees warmer here than it was outside because there was a connection between outside and underneath the tub. Now we look at, we have holes for these sidewall brackets that are not going to get sealed and air can get into this cavity underneath the, the tub and, uh, and cause problems. So the, the solution is to run drywall all the way down to the floor before we frame the platform for the tub and that'll uh, keep the outside air uh, from getting underneath the tub and keep the tub and all the plumbing in condition space instead of being connected to the outside. All right, here we have a, a soaring foyer here and we have a, a round top window. And if we look at the way it's framed, uh, you know, square uh, framing, round window, and we just have a, a hole cut in the uh, sheathing uh, and we have an odd shaped uh, space to insulate there. So. Chances are, you know, that's not going to get insulated properly, and we're going to have a, uh, a thermal um, weak spot in the, in the wall assembly there. 
And we know that with a lot of glass, um, you know, some of these foyers have glass from the, from the bottom all the way to the top, a big wall of glass, and the glass is always gonna be colder than the wall. We have R19 here, six inch wall, and we're gonna have the U value of these windows is uh, 0.3, and if we divide, uh, actually the U value there is 0.28, so that's a little bit better. One divided by 0.28 is 3. Uh, 3.7 or something. So the R value of this window is 3.7. The R value of the wall, R19, clearly the window is always going to be cold. So if we have a wall of windows, we're going to be cooling the air. We're always going to feel a draft. In fact, people might say, whoa, that door downstairs is very drafty, very leaky. Well, <clears throat> it might not be the door that's leaking. It's going to be this big wall of windows that's constantly cooling the air and the air is descending hits the floor, crawls across the floor, goes up the interior wall, across the ceiling, repeat, okay? So we got a convective loop and the door gets blamed for all the leakage. Now the door might leak a little too, but this big wall of windows is likely to blame. All right, here we have a chase uh, from the basement to the, to the attic where the return trunk comes up and the supply trunk comes up. And, uh, in this case, the HVAC contractor has used a metal L channel and fire caulk to seal uh, around these chases, but they're not sealed 100%, and air can still uh, get from the basement right up to the attic, which is uh, really the expressway for the air. Now, this is a modern house. Um, before 1990 or so, um, we would have a chase, a huge chase. In fact, all this space here might be cut out where air could get from the basement right to the attic. We have uh, many houses where you can look down from the attic right to the basement floor, two stories, and huge air leak uh, throughout the house. So that would be a big priority to seal it at the top in the attic. If we had a choice, do we want to seal that at the basement ceiling or at the attic floor? Always seal it at the attic floor. Why? If we seal it at the basement ceiling, then any air that got into this chase cavity uh, through the first and second floor, through electrical outlets, uh, through between the drywall uh, and the framing, between the subfloor and the framing. Any air that got into this chase can still leak out at the top. So I'd rather, if I was going to do one or the other, I'd rather seal it at the attic uh, floor and catch it there. Here we have uh, the plumber uh, has drilled a, a pipe through the uh, bottom plate and he sealed it with fire caulk. But that is not uh, normal, that's new. Uh, the code requires that. And um, in old houses, that would be a gap right through uh, between floors and right to the basement and right to the attic. I mean, you see that, that hole there is mo more important than that one because it goes to the attic. But it is sealed, but in uh, older houses, uh, and I always say not, not that much older, uh, these are gonna be open all day long. Okay, here we have the electrician drilling holes for wires, and wires are gonna go through there and there's gonna be a big hole. Uh, again, this is between floors, we're not so concerned about that, but at the top, uh, going to the attic, that would be a big issue and we would wanna seal around there. Uh, now, my understanding is uh, the code at this point requires the electrician to seal uh, around those wires uh, with fire caulk, but uh, again, most houses, there is uh, millions and millions and millions of houses out there with uh, holes for wires that big and wires going through them that's that big and they have a lot of space around them. If you're building a new house, you're gonna have to live with it a long time. If you'd like advice on how to keep it energy efficient forever and ever, call Dr. Energy Saver. We'd love to help you.